is Audrey and I'm at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum and welcome to today's Storytime with Audrey. So today we are going to be reading Who Pooped at the Park? Scat and Tracks for Kids, Big Bend National Park, written by Gary D. Robeson and illustrated by Robert Rath. Alright, let's get started. Who Pooped in the Park? Dad, I have to go to the bathroom, said Michael as he squirmed in the back seat. We'll be at the campground soon, said Dad. We're in Big Ben National Park now. He's just nervous, said Michael's sister. He thinks a bear is going to eat him. She growled at Michael and made her fingers look like claws. Stop it, Emily, said Mom. Nobody is getting eaten by anything. Michael was very excited about the trip, but Emily was right. He was nervous. He was reading a book about grizzly bears. Michael knew how big they could get, and he was afraid that a hungry bear would eat just about anything, maybe even a boy. I am kind of scared of grizzly bears, Michael admitted. Don't worry, Dad told him. There aren't any grizzlies in Big Bend National Park, or anywhere in Texas, just black bears. Mom reached back and held Michael's hand. She said, we'll show you how to count a black bear's toes and never get close enough to be scared. When they arrived at the campsite, Mom said, let's set up the tent, then we can go for a walk and we'll show you what we mean. Michael was worried about bear toes, but tried not to show it. And then we've got a little bit of information called the straight poop. Big Bend National Park covers 800,000 acres. It's almost as big as the whole state of Rhode Island. Emily looked around and said, look at those mountains. I thought Big Bend was a desert. Big Bend National Park is very big, Dad answered. It has mountains, rivers, forests, and desert valleys too. I've got the tent set up and packed plenty of water, so we're ready. Hold still, Michael, Mom said. Even great explorers need sunscreen. Let's go, said Emily. I want to see some animals. Emily started to complain before they got very far. Where are all the animals? I haven't seen any yet. The straight poop. Armadillos are the official state small mammal of Texas, but none live in Big Bend National Park. The animals are here, said Dad. We just need to look for their sign. Sign, said Michael, like a sign at a zoo? Dad smiled. In this case, a sign is a clue that an animal left behind. Look under that mesquite bush. An animal has been nibbling on the grass. All of these signs tell a story, added Mom. See the little tracks the animal left in the dirt? You can count four toes in each footprint. Look over here, I found bunny poop, just like in Velvet's cage back home, yelled Michael. We came all the way to Big Bend National Park for rabbit poop, Emily moaned. Michael's bunny makes plenty of poop at home. Scientists and rangers call it scat instead of poop, kids, mom said with a grin. But you're right, this is from a rabbit or a hare. See, Michael, we don't have to get up and close to an animal to learn about it, said dad. Instead of a close encounter with the scary kind, We'll have a close encounter with the poopy kind. Everybody laughed and mom made a grossed out face. The straight poop. Despite the name, jackrabbits aren't really rabbits. They're hares. They have longer legs and longer ears than rabbits. Black-tailed jackrabbits can leap up to 10 feet in one bound. Here's some bigger bunny poop over here. I mean, rabbit scat, said Michael, trying to sound grown up. Mom took a look. That's not from a rabbit, she said. It's from a deer. The pellets are shaped like jelly beans, not round like rabbit scat. The straight poop. Rabbits eat their own scat. They do this to get as much nutrition from their food as they can. The little brown balls are scat that's already been through twice. If that's deer scat, 
Then are these deer footprints? Asked Emily. She was starting to have fun finding the clues the animals left behind. Yes, said Dad. You can see how their hooves are split down the middle. Michael spotted something on the ground. Oh no, he said. Here's one of its antlers. Did the deer get eaten by a bear? Mom bent down by the antler. Don't worry, the deer is fine. This is called a shed antler. The antlers fall off every winter and the deer grows a new, bigger set the next year. This antler is from a mule deer, said dad. You can tell mule deer and white tailed deer apart by the mule deer's forked antlers, big ears, and little tail with the black tip. The straight poop. Female deer don't grow antlers except for reindeer. They are the only type of deer in which the males and females both have antlers. Horns are different than antlers. Antlers are shaped like branches and fall off every year. Horns never fall off and keep growing for the animal's entire life. Deer have antlers. Bighorn sheep have horns. This deer was in a hurry, though, said Mom as she studied the ground. Emily and Michael went over to look. How can you tell, said Emily. The hoof prints get very far apart here, explained Mom, and the front prints are behind the back prints. The deer was walking backwards, said Michael. No, it was galloping. When deer run very fast, their tracks look different than when they walk. Something must have scared this one. Here's what scared the deer, Dad said. There are coyote tracks and scat all around. Some of the tracks are small, like they're from pups, said Mom. I'll bet their den is near here. The tracks look like dog tracks, said Michael. That's because the coyote is a member of the dog family, explained Dad. The straight poop. Coyotes just about eat just about anything they can catch, and they steal leftovers from other predators, too. If you look closely, you can tell coyote scat from dog scat. Coyotes eat small animals instead of dog food, so you'll find hair and bits of bone in the coyote scat. These kind of look like deer tracks, said Emily, but they're smaller and not as pointy. The scat is different too, added Michael. Who pooped here? That skunk smell is a clue, said Dad. But Dad, skunks don't have hooves, said Emily. It wasn't a skunk, said Mom. These tracks are from a collared peccary. That's a funny name, Emily giggled. What's a peccary? They're kind of like wild pigs, answered Dad. Remember, they are wild animals, so don't get too close. The straight poop. Peccaries have a musk gland that makes them smell a little like a skunk. The smell is not normally very strong, but they get smellier when they are scared. Many people in Texas call the collared peccary a javelina, which is the Spanish name for it. Is this another coyote track? asked Emily. It looks bigger. It also doesn't show any claw marks, and the front of those, the big pad looks dented in, said Mom. Those are two clues, clues that this is a cat track. And since it's too big to be a bobcat track, it must be from a cougar, added Dad. Michael had forgotten about bears, but was getting a little worried about giant cats. Are cougars as big as mountain lions, he asked. Cougars and mountain lions are the same animal, replied Mom. They're also called panthers, painters, pumas, and catamounts. That's a little cat with a lot of names. The straight poop. Cats can retract their claws, so their tracks normally don't show claw marks. Because mountain lions eat other animals, you'll find hair and bits of bone in their scat. So no claw marks means the tracks are from a cat, asked Emily. Most of the time, but there's one member of the dog family that has very small, sharp claws, so they don't usually show in their tracks, Mom answered. The gray fox, said Dad. Great foxes can even climb trees like cats, and because they like to sit up high and mark their territory with their scat, you can sometimes find fox scat in trees and up on the top of big rocks. 
the straight poop. Cat tracks showing a lead, show a leading toe. It sticks out a little bit farther than the other toes. Dog tracks do not have a leading toe. The front toes are more even. Ow! Emily sucked on her finger and frowned at the big plant. This thing has sharp leaves. That's a century plant, said Mom. It only blooms once in its whole life, after it's 20 to 50 years old. People used to think that they bloomed every 100 years. That's why they're called century plants, added Dad. The straight poop. Apache Indians pulled the fibers and the, of the leaves of century plants and twisted them together to make ropes, sandals, and mats. They roasted and ate the center, or heart, of the plant. These, funny looking, these are funny-looking tracks, said Michael. And it looks like the dirt is all pushed around, too. Mom went over to look. Those tracks are from a road run runner, Michael. And the swirls in the dirt show that it was chasing a fast-moving snake. Roadrunners eat snakes, said Emily. They eat all kinds of animals, answered Dad. Snakes, scorpions, lizards, mice, and even other birds. Are these tracks from a roadrunner, too? asked Michael. Let's see, said Dad. The toes are wider, and the backward-pointing toes aren't as long. This must be from an owl. The straight poop. Roadrunners can run up to 15 miles per hour. They don't fly very often or very far. Maybe just into a tree to get away from a hungry coyote. But the biggest clues are these owl pellets on the ground, said Mom. Owl pellets, said Emily. Owls eat their prey whole, explained Dad. The parts they can't digest, like hair and bones, get coughed up in a pellet like this. Yuck, said the kids. What kind of owl made the, the tracks in the cough pellets, Michael asked. The bigger the tracks in the pellets, the bigger the owl, said Dad. So it could be a great horned owl. Here's some really big scat, said Michael. Who pooped here? I know, Emily said excitedly. A horse. Right, said Mom. And there are some hoof prints from the horse, too. Those are funny looking hoof prints. The straight poop. Horses can walk while they poop, but they need to stand still to pee. Horses don't have split hooves like deer and peccaries, said Dad. Each hoof has just one part. I think he's talking about the horseshoes, said Mom. They make the hoof prints look different. The straight poop. Horses that are ridden a lot have metal shoes attached to their hooves to protect them from wear. Horse tracks show the shape of the horseshoe. These tracks are weird too, said Michael. It looks like a coyote track, but way smaller. And there are more toes and an extra pad in the back, said Dad. It's a ringtail trap. Emily's eyes lit up. Ringtails are cool. I love those big eyes. Do you think we'll see one? Ringtails are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and come out at night, replied Mom. So we probably won't see one. The straight poop. Ringtails eat other small animals, birds, insects, and plants. happened to this tree? asked Michael. Something was sharpening its claws, Michael. And if you look at how high those scratch marks go, it was pretty big, said Mom. It's not just the animal that's big, said Emily. Look at the size of this poop. It looks like we found Michael's black bear, said Dad. Michael jumped. Where? he asked. I mean we found it scat, said Dad. Let's see what you can learn today what you've learned today. What can you figure out about this bear? The bear is as tall as Dad, and it look has really long claws, said Michael, looking at the scratch marks on the tree. It's been eating plants, said Emily. 
because there's no hair or bones in this poop. Good, Mom said. What else? Here's its footprint, said Michael. The track is really big, and instead of five toes like a ring tail, and it has five toes like a ring tail, and instead of four like a mountain lion. I told you you'd be able to count a bear's toes, laughed Mom. The straight poop. Black bears eat almost anything. They mostly live on leaves, nuts, berries, insects, twigs, and honey, but they also eat carrion, which is dead animals, and hunt small animals. As they ate dinner that night, everyone talked about how much fun they had. We didn't see very many animals, said Emily, but it seemed like we did. Everyone laughed when Michael said, and I didn't get scared once. The end. And on this back page, you can have a big chart of all the animals we talked about and their footprints and their scat. Well, thank you all for joining us today for story time with Audrey. And I hope you had a great time and that you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye now.